Is that a Supra? It's Matt Ferris Million Mile Lexus. It is. That's underpants is in here. Oh, cool. What's up, everybody? My name is Elliot, but you can call me the Motory Notary. And remember, you can't predict the future, but it is a lot of fun to try to guess what the future might hold. And that's exactly what's going to happen today, because as you can see behind me, this is Tyler Hoover's Jeep, presumably used in Car Trek 6. Of course, you guys already know that because it's December where you're watching this. But for me, it's still September, and I'm about to get absolutely inundated with future Car Trek cars. The transport should be arriving soon, so let's go check it out. All right, the truck is here and look at these things. Oh my gosh. I know you guys have already recognized these cars, but for me here in September, these are all new awesome vehicles. I'm especially intrigued by this Cayenne up here. That's Ed's and it is awesome. Look at this, the Patina 911, presumably Freddy's Mitsubishi, Tyler's Tesla, which just got the battery replaced and the famous Tavarish Supra. Oh. This is freaking awesome. All right, update on the progress. Some cars are unloaded, but they're still, well, messing stuff around. This whole process means that certain cars need to come off before other cars go on. And over here, we have the three that have been unloaded so far. We've got the Million Mile Lexus, the most beat to hell 911 I've ever seen in my life. And of course, the Mercedes that I guess is going to go off of a cliff based on the license plate. Again, you guys already know what happened. It's still September for me. I mean, heck, I'm sweating out here and this is December when you guys are watching this. This whole thing is taking place on like a Terminator timeline. Anyway, let's keep unloading these cars. Look how fast the mechanism moves this thing, like it's nothing. This whole trailer is amazing. It's the nicest non-enclosed trailer I've ever seen. It is so nice and new. It's tossing these cars around like they weigh nothing. It's so cool to watch. Okay, so take a look at the Cayenne now that it's off of the trailer. This is still going to go back with them, so this is the only chance I'll have to see it before the show ends. And it is just the coolest looking Cayenne I have ever seen. It's a bright color, which I love. It's got numbers on it. It's got huge, like 33 inch tires, the coolest roof rack. I just love this thing. And if there's one car that I would want to buy out of all of these when they're done with it, it'd be this one. And then I'd have one from all three of the guys. But let's check out the inside and see how good it is. Oof, 172,000 miles. But all the pixels seem to be working in there and it doesn't look horrible. You got a little uh, headliner sag there, but I mean, what car this age doesn't? This thing is awesome. I hope that I can acquire it one day. That is, unless they roll it off of a cliff. Please don't roll this one over, Ed. Although I guess you guys watching will know what happens by this point. I just don't. It's lucky being in the future, isn't it? You guys like that? Do you like knowing what I don't know? I bet that's fun. Anyway, they're getting the super off next, I think. And this will be cool because I think this has to connect over there and make a bridge in order for them to get to Varsha's super off. Oh look, it's happening. The bridge is forming. This trailer is so freaking cool. And that's that, I guess. All right, the Supra is off. The other two SUVs have been off and now he's manipulating the Tesla off. That is gonna be the final car off of the trailer that's staying here. Now I gotta go get the Jurassic Park Jeep, bring it out here because the SUVs are going back on the trailer and making their way to Colorado. This has been the most fun vehicle reception that I've ever had for vehicles that aren't mine because they're all so cool. And even though I haven't seen Car Trek yet and even though it hasn't even been filmed yet, I understand the significance of all of these cars. So I'm just like a little schoolgirl here about how excited I am to be their steward for a little while. All right, final car. Poopy Tesla coming off the trailer. Do not want to be the one backing that off. That is, I have a hard enough time putting cars on four post lift tracks. This is a long, long ramp. And success. Now I gotta just go get the Jurassic Park Jeep and then uh, the truck can be on its way. Okay. Fun little fact about these though, the little key is like a rock. That's pretty cool. 1990s Chrysler. Starts right up. All right, well, I guess I'll just leave it here for him. All right, well, I guess the next time I'll see these SUVs will be on Car Trek. 
I guess you guys have already seen these SUVs. I forget, I'm talking to people of the future. Whew. What a weird world we live in. And there they go. Off to Colorado. What a cool unloading experience. And now here I am with a collection of unused car track cars, which I will now put inside and then take you on a more in-depth tour of. So let's get to it. All right, well, it has taken so long for me to get all of the cars inside that I had time to get a haircut and Tyler Hoover appeared out of nowhere. I got a haircut too. That's awesome. It's a good day for it. <laughs> but the good news is, even though you haven't started filming Car Trek either, you at least know more about these cars than I do. And one of them is yours. This one. Th that? Yeah. Oh, this. I haven't seen it since it went off to uh, Rich Rebuilds for, uh, well, battery failure, unfortunately. Yeah, and Rich got burned a little bit because of this invoice that he made up. But it was at the actual cost of a replacement battery, which this car needed. Unfortunately, it was just too bad to sell. So he was able to fix it for like $5,000 versus $22,000. But I didn't have time to really do anything, including unpimping this thing because it is... It yeah, is, uh, the, the tinted headlights are a bit much. Highly illegal. And boy, just from moving it around, you can't see crap from the sides. And it smells like the kind of stuff you would put in the car to cover up smoking weed. It's had an interesting life. Is that Matt Ferris Million Mile the, Lexus? It's the one. It's Matt Ferris Million Mile Lexus. It is. And this is the, I believe, what uh, everyone, when they say they want their car eggshell, this is what they want it to truly be like. Actually flaking off. This is in actually incredible shape. I can't believe it. I kind of thought it would smell funnier, but even just moving it around in here, it starts right up. Get your kids a Lexus if you want it to last forever, at least an early 90s Lexus. Oh, they spent a lot of money keeping it going, as yeah. Matt documented, but hopefully Freddy doesn't kill it. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Even even tasteful F-Sport badging. <laughs> Look at your lights. I know. How do you think of the new studio setup? It's a lot more professional now. We can move around in here. I kind of want to jump on it and do monkey bars, but I... I don't know if it's would... up for that. Okay. Well, doesn't this make my 996 look like a Concours award-winning specimen? Yeah. So, I mean, I could only see it from outside, but a 911 with an actual chunk missing is something else. I'm and it's got, a, <laughs> it's got some sort of pull cord here, presumably for the frunk. Hey. <laughs> okay. Classy. Yeah. This thing, I imagine, has quite the story, which is why it makes total sense that this is one of Ed's cars. Ed's underpants is in here. Oh, cool. The only way to describe it, just from looking at it, is that it spent 10 years outside in a place with no shade, and then somebody bought it and tracked it. It's just, it's a crazy visual experience, this 911. You never see them all beat up like this. But this one's also got track duty stuff, like the... Roll bar. Roll bar. It says it's Porsche tech equipment, so it's like actual real stuff. Hmm. This was the nice carbon knob. That would have been pretty fancy Yeah, back in 99, especially. Yeah, they it's must have pulled the seats out of it when they were racing and put them back in because they're somehow not just torn destroyed. Up. Yeah, the interior doesn't match. And then what is the odometer? 47,000? That's insane. Yeah, this shows... 300,000 miles yeah, on the... Yeah, 150 <laughs> on mine with the LS swap, and it looks... 10 times better than this. But it has the, the rare body kit that apparently has been on here the entire time because it is yeah. equally as faded as the rest of the car. Factory aero kit. Steal that from my car. And some weird exhaust tips. Ed is not very mechanically sympathetic. These things blow up on the track when you do the thing, uh, True. the oil overheat says, I know you, you have some experience with that. Twelve yeah. times two. He won't pay attention to that. But maybe since this car has been tracked, they put on the uh, extra oil cooler. Well, I mean, that's going to make for a good car track. You guys know, you guys have already seen car track. We don't know. This is no, the, probably the best this, condition this car is going to be in for the next while. Is this September or October? I don't this know. is September. Well, no, September. yeah, it's late September. It's September right now. It is. I don't, I, I don't know what day it is anymore. It's Freddy's Supra that has been chronicled. Is that a Supra? <laughs> it actually is really, really nice in person. I don't know why I expected it to be kind of not as nice in person. That's not because I've seen other Freddy cars. So it's not I'm a dig. <laughs> I'm just saying I just expected it to be, you know, show better on camera than it does in real life. But this looks and is a super in great condition. Like the, the everything is, is nice. Beautiful. Yeah, everything is very, very nice. I saw this when he first got it four or five years ago. But it still has the Ronald McDonald interior yeah. vinyl spec so i kind of do like here do. pop the trunk though for freddy's underpants well no we, we've got i think he's got some secret sauce back here that's not fair sabotage all these cars we could wings. when this thing got off the truck the truck driver was like i'm gonna roll the windows down on this one and i was like it's fine i mean i'm taking it right inside but why oh. and uh 
he got some racing. He got fuel. some racing fuel. So I think that's going to factor in at some point during car trek. And then all of the tools you could ever want and need: a huge clevis, a bunch of tools. Apparently, a 428 piece set. Because Freddie wouldn't take the time to organize and pack his tools. He just buys. You buy him pre-packed. He buys a new <laughs> set about every six months, rather than putting his tools away properly. Yeah, so the S-Class kind of confuses me because it looks so nice inside and out. It's a really cool color, but the license plate says Cliff Dive. Like it's got its normal S-Class stuff, like the shift knob's a little loose, but I mean, it seems fine. It, well, it moans. Not normal. Okay. Fine. 166,000 miles, so really, how much? He's gonna drive this off a cliff? COVID saved this car because they canceled it because of COVID. And thank goodness they did because it's, I mean, it's nice. so beautiful. Some free car trek merch in the back. Oh, how about that? And Vin Wiki shirts. And more underwear. And more underwear. I think the same story in back here. He does change his underwear about four times a day. Loose stools and things. Look at this. Yep. He's so packed. Well, it's and loafers. Great. Oh, yes. Mm. Great. So this is going to be the crazy color this year. It was yeah. yellow last time. Oh, hey, you fit right in it. Well, never no, mind. You got no, some space. No, you got no. some space. Never mind. <laughs> no, it has bigger feet, bigger hands, bigger. Uh, oh, okay. Anyway, um, also uh, of note, you got one very nice clear headlight, one foggy. I think it's an Avalon King demonstration in some way. Regardless, Ed told me that I could drive the 911 in the S Class. I didn't even bother. For, bo <clears throat> I didn't even bother asking Freddie. And I've been driving. What was that noise? <laughs> starting over again. Oh, but there's a little grunt in there, like a little mini orgasm or something. I was frustrated. Oh. Anyway, let's get the 911 out because I feel like this is more interesting to drive than the S-Class. Ah, uh, can, you, can you move that heap? And this is not a new car at all, right? No, no. You've had, had this, this for months. Run. This is old news. Ah, what a sexy car. Well, oh man. Oh, okay. I want to crunch his chips. Everything else I don't really care about. With the airbag light thing. on. Yeah, you know, just don't get in wreck. But see, even in the parking lot, it feels all right. It feels very tight. It doesn't feel like the crazy. Sh <laughs> <laughs> you grunted again. I know, because I'm like. Mm, mm. <laughs> with 996 so I know that's what I'm saying you've had your experience so I don't think <laughs> my very first shift we might have a second gear synchro <laughs> issue <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm gonna have to go on the track against this and then Maserati my I fourth you didn't know what was going on by this point it will have aired they will have seen me on track in my Maserati that did famously it did so well nothing went wrong and it hopefully is faster than this you know what hmm. an LS is way faster in one of these it is I bet yeah the last 996 you've driven <laughs> Uh, had a bit more torque. So you're probably driving this track. When's the power come on? Where is it at? <laughs> yeah, are we uh, pulling a couple of coils on these cars before they pick them up? I think we should. Sure didn't like losing last time. Uh, this was the old stomping grounds back in high school. It's this road, and it's got a nice banked turn. But since high school, it has kind of gone to crap. Uh, this is the only turn at speed you can do in Wichita, so everyone still kind of comes out here and does it. But. That's what living in the plains is like. Here we go. I don't know, from the passenger seat, it feels pretty tight. Very tight. Like 47,000 miles tight. So that, that might be... Oh, oh yeah, see, this is the part that got rough. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, we used to do like 130 and 110 on this back stretch back in high school. There's no way you fly off the road now. What do we got going on down here? It's kind of like a, a mobile other people's cars. We got some tools. You guys are gonna be set for tools. And a, uh, ooh, an inverter. Cool, he's, he's gonna need a lot of power. God. This section of the road is brutal. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, your Maserati could probably hang. Yeah, but it's a little looser in the corners than this by a lot. Yeah, it would fix the suspension, yeah, then. It's $4,000. <laughs> So, so yeah, it's I haven't I exactly jumped on that. Mm. So what are you going to do? Then? Going to drive it, and it's going to be fine. It's not going to fall out. It's just yep. going to be loose. Don't it up in the wall, please. I know. My, my land yacht that I'm taking out there. 
Oh yeah, the, gonna be, we already know it's the, the Trans Am, right? It's gonna be a that's handful. gonna be sweet. But you're gonna smoke everybody on the streets. Uh, uh, that thing's gonna be a rocket, and then uh, I hope the brakes are up for the then, task. Then take a turn, <laughs> yeah, and then stop. Yeah. Solid rear axle, stock brakes. Ugh. But you guys already know how this turned out. Mm -hmm. But you did great. I could be dead. You could be, or, like this, this or you could have done. You could have surprised everyone with the car that didn't have the ingredients to win. You don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he's got a lot of microfiber cloths down here, which I mean, you're not going to be needing to clean this car. It comes with all the underwear that he needs. For oh, all that's, the for, that's for wiping himself. Ed doesn't do normal toilet paper. He's a microfiber man. And he doesn't do toilets either. And, uh, <laughs> wipes it with a fresh microfiber and then changes his underpants. And that's just that's just you know how what? he rolls. I kind of want to get to that point in my life. It's, it's a weird I'll... Howard Hughes thing that he has where he has to <laughs> crap himself. He can't use a toilet. Microfiber. Everybody, everybody's got their ticks. All right. Well, that was a fun drive. This thing feels pretty tight. Oh my. There's no way. <laughs> Look at all the hair in there. That is disgusting. This is this beard comb only? I hope that's from his beard and not. Ooh, his. Mm. He hates toilet humor. <laughs> and that's all I've done this entire time. And somehow I have rubbed black onto my eye here. Oh, for this entire thing. That's sweet. How'd you do that? Oh, uh, you're probably from fingering around in the oh, hole up there. Oh, probably yeah. in the dark hole. <laughs> dark. This, is, <laughs> this is great. 911 looks bad on the outside. Seems to drive pretty well. Drives tight. I thought it was a rollback car, but even as a passenger, I don't think that's the case. I just got to tuck this pull string back in here. Hey, anyway, Tyler, thanks for stopping by and uh, helping to explain some of what's going on with these cars. Mm. No problem. <laughs> All right, well, be sure to check out. <clears throat> they did it again. <clears throat> Dang it. The Why do you call it out? <clears throat> I didn't even know it. <clears throat> it just. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, be sure to check out Car Trek 6 if you guys haven't already. It's good, it's awesome. I'm in it for two seconds, and the Maserati totally doesn't break or anything. So, anyway, thank you, Tyler, and we'll see you guys later. <clears throat> <clears throat>